Today we're bringing back an older series, how to get better Apex Legends through VOD review. Hopefully I do a better job of it this go around. If you want clips to be a part, be sure and join the Discord, check announcements when we're looking for clips, or just flat out DM them to me. I promise I'll try to get through as many clips as possible, and yeah. So we got clips today from Ranked, Scrims, and just regular play. And this first clip, this was sent from Wolf. So what we're gonna do, let's break down this clip, and we're gonna go back and forth between MS Paint, but also pause and pretty much give our insight and today's theme is really about when to push and making smart pushes when they are absolutely necessary so let's begin now in this first clip there's a lot of fantastic things that are happening and we're going to break down how to solve when you get pinched between two teams now in this first encounter we're going to pause this was actually a really solid queue we have wraith who's playing entry frag and then goes back to the team so i don't really see anything wrong here Everything seems really positive. Of course, you can land more shots, that's mechanical, so nothing else to really worry about in this clip. So you lost your one, you back out to your team and reposition. Pretty solid. Now this is a tip for the catalyst. When making a wall, putting it in a straight line is not always ideal. In this scenario, it definitely could have broken LOS, but putting it more at an angle so then it works as a curtain for the individual rather than just a straight shot can be we can probably say that's a little bit up in the air whether or not that tip is helpful. I just find whenever it's in a straight line, it doesn't benefit as much. So any Catalyst player out there, just a bit little tip. And there you go. You see how the, when we, if we look back, it doesn't provide the curtain that we're looking for. I think if it was put at an angle, the curtain can be much better. Now there's no problem here right now. The team is back together and we're seeing a solid reset. We do see a loss in resources, which is expected going into a fight like this. The Bangalore is ulting to either push forward or angle them out. Nothing wrong here. Now, once this is gone, they need to put pressure and maintain pressure up. And this is where we see where things can, we could say kind of go awry. Some positives here. This damage is fantastic, okay? Now, in this scenario, when you're stuck between potentially two teams and you know there's a team that's probably going to third party and this is ranked so this is more likely going to happen my best advice is always to move forward and make a play right now from what we see the two individuals one here and one here is that they're not scaling or occupying space the intention is that you're going to have to fight off this team right so what we're going to do let's go into paint real quick let's take a look at paint so right now we have the t our team here essentially, and we have the potential team over here, right? We only really know where one is. And so looking for, for information is pretty much key in this scenario. Now, if you have another team that's gonna show up and we're gonna come back to this and talk about it, you don't know that they're there yet. So that's an outlier. You wanna get this team out because they're aggressing on you. They've already made a play and you're kind of already committed to the decision to fight this team. So when we continue on the clip, let's take a look. Now there was a bit of split here. This is good. Pushing to try to occupy space to get them to slow down. Massive damage is here. This is where I would pause and say that you're gonna have to move forward instead of backing up. The reason why is all you're doing is creating a reset and if you look at your resources, you're not gonna have a whole lot of resources for the fight. So cleaning up sooner is ideal. I know this is really hard for most individual players, it kind of seems like you're over aggressing or making a dumb play, but you have to occupy space and this fight has to finish or else you're going to get sandwiched and your resources are only going to be so limited, right? It's almost better if you are here and this is, we're going to talk about the L LOS and line of sight. Let's say one person goes here and they start focusing you, right? Once you're here, this team, your teammates can essentially watch your cross if they move up just slightly. That's the benefit. Your teammates can actually lay down pressure and you're more likely to get a knock because maybe one of these individuals can make a mistake. All right. That's the added benefit there. So you might need to spread them out just a little bit more so then we understand further. If we see this again, if Wolf decided to go from here to let's say over here and the teammates are watching here, if they decide to push him, these two individuals can watch. That's what we're looking for. And that's where you're trying to make a play. But if you back up from the scenario, granted this is a good head glitch, and there may not be a whole lot of positioning here, but you have to trust your teammates to make a play. Otherwise, oh, we got a knock. And there we go. See, the teammate did do something really positive here. They got the knock, but this could have happened sooner by moving forward and being closer to make that play, right? Because if they were further up, yes, the third party is still going to show up, but then they have a way to get out. 
time. All right, so they cancel the port, which is okay, because then this is another thing you can do. You can also wait for the encounter to be over. Once you hope that this team here is going to aggress on the other team. So if we go to MS Paint, we check this out. If we revert back here and we say the team on the south side is holding, well, they, you're trying to avoid being the sandwich, and hopefully they run into each other, and then you can aggress. Or you can take the port and go all the way around and then no longer become the meat of the sandwich, essentially. Patching myself up. And you're going to see where, because there's a lot of great damage done. And this is where a lot of teams kind of get stuck, is that you kind of have to make a bolder move. So now this team's got a knock, and they're going to be less likely to aggress and push. And they do secure this, which is a positive. Now, in this scenario, it is in their best interest to move around, to go all the way this way. Because even if they move forward, the team still behind is going to play, play focus, right? Kill them. And this is where focus fire has to happen. And it can be really difficult and really annoying to deal with. See how the time, this team went back this way, the other team went back the other way. And you have to avoid being the center focus. And that's really hard. And all of this is always in hindsight 2020, right? It's always hard to feel at those moments. But hopefully from seeing it, they got the res there. They reset. So they get their loot here and they start moving up and start pushing. Now they know that they're still there because why would the two teams no longer fight? So we're going to skip just a little bit further ahead here. Okay, unfortunately he did take a lot of damage, but if you notice as well... So they did take a little bit of unnecessary damage, unfortunately, and it makes this fight a lot harder because they don't have space, right? So let's talk about what that means in terms of space. I'm going to show you what I mean. Now, it's ideal for individuals to try to make a play that has value. Now, if you both peek the same spot, that is value because you're trying to take a 2v1. Let's say there's one person here and you're behind the big rock and then you're both here, right? That's a 2v1 and your teammates in the back. That could be a 3v1. But the downside is if everyone's here and everyone starts angling you out and they play too patiently, then you're going to run into a problem because they, they have information of where you're at, but you don't know where they are at. So isolating, this is where your composition, especially from your strength and weaknesses as a team, can really come into play. You start to ask the questions, maybe we find Bloodhound is more efficient because we're able to identify who is the weaker of the squad and who can we get out. This is a lot of good damage here. They do get a knock. There's a trade. But unfortunately, it becomes more a Hail Mary at this point on the fight. But the initial part of this fight could have been solved more or less on the rotation and then pushing on the damage that they did have. I really encourage everyone to more or less play when you have the upper hand, and let's say you don't have the upper hand, then you just retreat and bait them back until you can get the upper hand. But I find a lot of people will do a lot of fantastic damage, but they don't capitalize on it because you've already gotten the value. You have the opportunity to move forward on that positioning and secure it. If you can secure it, then you can avoid situations such as getting sandwiched or a hard reset or running low on resources. So that's pretty much the theme of today. So there's a lot of different vari variables. So there's a lot of different variables to consider when doing VOD review. Remember, it's not all about just being one way is the correct version. There's a lot of different breaking points here when we look at this VOD. We see where the damage here could have caused an opportunity from the initial part. Could have caused an early rotate a little faster here and then keep capitalizing and rotating and just pushing them. These two individuals could have moved also sooner or they could have rotated completely out using a Wraith portal or after they did the damage again just full sending it and then securing or once the third party showed up that they completely wait then port all the way around and go for this building which is a, a, also as strong of a position and then sandwich them so there's a lot of different variables here but it's again all hindsight 2020 hopefully now that you kind of see hey there's a lot more at your disposal be confident i'm very confident that a lot of people who watch this you can actually do a lot more than what's expected of you and it's okay to make a mistake. I'd rather actually, and this we're going to talk about this next clip, it's okay to make a mistake and push yourself forward because it's easier to pull you back. So let's look at the next clip, shall we? Now, this next clip was actually sent from Bella. 
Bella was very kind of sharing this clip and she's really learning how to push and find plays. I'm gonna relate this to the acting world where it's very hard to get somebody to project and really act than pull it out of them. I actually find it easier to pull people back than it is to get people to move and do things. And look at the positives. At least now when you see your mistake, you went for it and you can pull yourself back and say, hey, that wasn't, that could have been fixed or been fine tuned. So let's talk about what we mean by a smart push, looking information versus one where you overextend. All right. So right now you've got a lot of information. You know that you out armor, probably most of them since you got two purples and a blue. So we're going to pause right here. Boom. We know that we got a 1v1 right here. There's a few things you can do if we just back up here when it comes to playing positioning. If you look here on the left, you can actually play this bin here. So then you have cover or you can play the side of the bin as an option. Now going forward, this was definitely pretty ballsy, I will say. And throwing the ball does equalize the situation, but it's still pretty ballsy because that could be a 2v1 if they both turn. I guarantee they're probably panicking and they have a lot of visual clutter, so they don't have information exactly what's going on with you. Now let's continue. This is where I say the push over aggress and we're gonna pause here. Now you have won the encounter. This is where you, you back up for a moment and then heal. I think individuals think that when you keep pushing that you just push nonstop, but there's a moment where you pause and you look for angles and you look for cover and then you wait. I would say backing out through the door because you've knocked one, you have won this encounter and your teammates can essentially go in because they are healthier. Your teammates can act as meat shields. Maybe you only pop one cell, but you run in back with them because they're the focus. Unfortunately, what happens here in this scenario again is the over push and causing you to go down. Now, Bella's learning how to balance this out and I'm very proud of her for making bold decisions because it was very hard before because there would be no movement after doing a lot of damage. And then you have to ask yourself, is this fight worth it? Do I want this fight? Well, on a regular match, there's a lot less on the line here. And realistically, it's it's not a bad fight. But then you do have to reset. So in rank like the prior one, should we just go to zone and should we gatekeep? And there's a very clear difference between gatekeeping versus whenever you have to get a team out. So let's go ahead and like look at that again real quick. So when you happen to be a team on the far right that is gatekeeping, you have no reason to over aggress. Let's say they're looking, they can see this team and they can see that team, right? You're not the meat of the sandwich, so you don't have to make a play. So you're gatekeeping and finding your opportunity. This is in the scenario, just to explain the other one, where if you were, cause we're a VOD reviewing this team, remember, but if you happen to be this team, your circumstance changes and you have to play more patient because you don't want to be the meat of the sandwich and you need to create an opening and pretty much box them in. You don't want them to leave and you want them to fight. Okay. Now in this scenario that we're seeing with Bella here pushing forward on this team, you just have a clean fight, but you don't want to give them the advantage on the scenario by going down. Going down is probably the worst thing you can do because it means that your team has to take longer to reset. So again, if you find that you are not pushing enough, it's okay. Try to overextend to the point where you can start to look for variables such as cover or openings and then reset. People use different terminology here. They call it a soft reset. They could call it a reposition. They could call it a get healthy, slow down the fight, play smart. As long as we kind of understand what the situation means, everyone's got different terminology. Just ensure that whenever you feel at this moment that you know it means to, I, I guess, whatever the terminology you want to use. So now we're going to go into one that was scrims. And we're going to talk about this from a higher tier level now and what it means when you're forced to fight and when you should fight, right? So let's go ahead and break down the next clip. Now, in this clip, this was provided by Crony, Anita, and Nyx. This clip is a scrims clip when they were practicing for tournament play. And we're going to break down in terms of the value when it comes to getting teams out and teams that you want to get out versus teams you don't. There's seven squads remaining here. And if we look, there might be, there's a team here, there's a team here, and they do communicate as a squad that they want to fight. It's very clear that they want to get this team out because they're going to be able to have their backs cleared. Because unfortunately, if you don't, then we'll talk about later what happens when you don't fight teams. Now, it's interesting because they did win this round, but we're going to talk about how this could have been cleaner, gotten them more points, and how it could have been better. Got a fight breaking out on left. 
So utility has been used. It's important to note when utility is used that it's always best to capitalize on that utility. Otherwise, you're not going to have it again. Having information is very, very important, as we discussed. He's trying to climb up on me. So we have information that they want to fight this. And they want to aggress. We're going to have to kill this team because they're, they're encroaching on our space. So that's a very clear calm. We want to kill this team because they are encroaching on our space, which is very true. And they do have height advantage over them right now. But let's talk about what happens, why it doesn't go as as planned. I don't know where they are. I've scanned it down, scanned it down here. So first, scan went out. Communication is very important. So let's go ahead and pause again. How communication is very important and paying attention and what your team is doing, especially when one scan did go out, right? Crony does have height here. Scan. Scan in two, scan in two. All right, they're waiting for the information. There's the information there. Let's go ahead and pause here. This was a great moment already. They managed to get a crack, but they didn't get cracked themselves. That's a very big positive. A lot of damage has gone out. That means that their Bloodhound and Caustic can go for this encounter and start maintaining pressure because they do have somebody from height to still look. And we're going to break this down in MS Paint as well. Right, blood. 32 bang. Popping dog. I'm ulting zip. I can't see. I'm, I'm dodging this, I'm dodging this. Save now, we're going to take a look at more damage that goes out here. I'm just letting the kill, clip kind of play before we talk about it. So damage has gone out. More damage has gone out. This is really positive. Now, this is where I would say for the Bloodhound and Caustic that they need to move and make a play. Because they have them sandwiched in a corner, and every second that they don't, they have the opportunity to be third party or focused, and now the zone is pulling away. There's a lot at risk here. Because the zone is going to pull. They're going to have to run into him at some point where they're crossing here, crossing there. And they may get lucky, which they do because the team actually just full sends this way. Because they don't want to have to deal with this. Because they semi have already been losing this fight. They've been losing the damage fight. But unfortunately for this team, they lose that KP sooner. Now the flying up here is to avoid it. But at the same time, to make a play, they want to push onto this. And we're going to talk about how this can work, okay? So if they're on height here and there's on the rock, right? And there's two over here and there's one here and then one over here and then one over here, but this one does run over here. Crony has height to look down, does damage. They can push in. Even if this person and this person look, Crony should have visibility to hold their cross and do enough damage to push that team out to ensure that they're gaining value and positioning here. They've already done damage, but every second you hesitate at a higher level makes this a lot more difficult to win the encounter. Because again, if we remove a few of these and now they're all over here, yes, the problem is that they can all look this way. Remember, looking all the same way isn't ideal, but it can be a strength and numbers kind of situation. Crony has the view here, once gives up height, unless they go together, and they push as a unit and maintain that, Crony can still hold the cross here because they're going to look up and surprise them and get them out. But you have to maintain that pressure. Otherwise, they're just going to keep hunkering down and resetting and resetting and resetting because all they're doing is healing over and over and over and over again. And then you lose that opportunity. I got I to gotta get off my height. So now what we see is a full reset and the opportunity is gone. So it's very important when, let's say Crony is playing entry here, that they're able to make a play off of it. I know the fear, if we look at this as well, is that if they go for this, what if one of them goes down? Remember the value that you need here. If we look at the zone, you need this space because what if there's a team here about to push in and they sandwich you? Of course, you can get lucky in that scenario, yes. And they try to go for a flank and they try to find a position here. And that team does end up leaving and they get lucky in this. But things can go wrong, and this is where I say you want to be in control of the scenario, not letting circumstance happen in your favor. And you're going to see, let's go ahead and skip ahead, where nothing happens in their back. There was seven teams, and most of them happen to be this way. But notice how much they focused on this area, but were unaware of their backs. And the value of this has been gone, and they lost this KP. This is, this is pretty pretty lucky. They had a lot of power. This team here could have pushed in. They could have poked them. They could have tried to be, make them become the sandwich. There could have been a lot of different variables. I just encourage, as you guys are improving, to be in control of the situation. And if you're going to say you're going to fight, to commit to it and make a mistake rather than having just accidents happen like we see here. So the lobby didn't play out how it did, but we need to focus on what we could do better on how we can clean up these fights because then when they get to the end 
Think of all the more KP they could have gotten. A win is fantastic, don't get me wrong. But every team just so happened to kind of leave him alone in this scenario when they were seven to begin with here. And they somewhat lucked out. It's okay. And this, this doesn't mean that the gameplay was bad in any which way. There was a lot of fantastic damage and they did pressure this team. We always want to ask the question, how can we etch out a little bit more, but also feel confident to make a play like we're seeing here on this little image here, especially when you have such a strong position and want to get you guys that extra little bit of oomph to feel like you're in control. When you're not in control, it can be really frustrating and you kind of lose that confidence overall. So hopefully this video is helpful. There's a lot of different ways that this could happen. Again, they could have rotated the other way. Maintaining their position is not a bad thing and maintaining pressure. We're just figuring out how they can get more eliminations, but also work more cohesively as a squad so it doesn't happen to circumstance. So really positives across the board here. Everyone is making really strong plays. Let me know if you enjoy the series. I am going to always try to do three different type of clips from different styles of play. Um, thank you again for watching. Hopefully this didn't ramble too much and was pretty clear and concise. Remember, VOD review, all hindsight 2020. Put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. There's so many different options. Make mistakes as a team because sometimes the worst mistakes can be the best mistakes as long as you do it together. Or if you find value in what you're trying to do. So at the end of the day, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys all in the next one.